Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we know that Almighty God gave Jesus Christ as a means of restoring people to heaven, then God allowed Jesus Christ and the things around him to become an example for people to follow because he wanted mankind to return to heaven. And the only way mankind will return to heaven is by the forgiveness of sins for a sinless man to pour his blood on behalf of man. So all the life of Jesus from birth and especially the, the last few minutes of his life on the cross was orchestrated by God. For on the cross of Calvary, that is the final showdown of the eternal Father's mind to redeem man to heaven. The moment the blood of Jesus was spilled on the cross and the Lamb of God bled, it was finished for man. That man is now having the chance to enter into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. So whatever God allowed Jesus Christ to go through, it's, it is calculated. It is not impromptu. It was calculated until even the clothes that he was wearing, where people would take the clothes and part among them and play cha-cha with it, was written down many, 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 many years ago. It was calculated. The simple clothes of a man was removed. And people would tear it into pieces and then we would play dice. You win, I take this portion. I win, I take this portion. It was all recorded in scripture. Especially the thing that took place in Golgotha. We shouldn't take it for granted. That was the final stage of God's eternal mind coming on earth. So we must be careful what we say and what we do with respect to Jesus Christ. The two thieves, one on the left, one on the right, and he in the middle, it was not by chance. And the communication between the two chiefs, the two thieves in Jesus Christ was not for granted. It was not per chance. And I told you last Thursday, God instituted a formula for entering into heaven on the cross of Calvary. The man who said, when thou comest to thy kingdom, remember me. By that spoken word, he has believed in his heart the messiahship of Jesus Christ and has openly confessed the messiahship of Jesus Christ. That is the formula that God wanted the world to know. I've told you last Thursday, don't take it for granted. So when he raised the Apostle Paul, I told you last Thursday, to give the formula for the Gentile bride to follow, to enter into heaven, Apostle Paul in Romans 10, we read it, said, with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he who believeth that God has raised him from the dead the same shall be saved the same formula that God allowed to happen in the, on the cross of Calvary is repeated by the apostle Paul the foundation layer of the Gentile church so if you joke with your soul by believing any other Christ than that which God has raised, you are praying with your soul. And there are end time message teachings that are replacing the name of man and other people in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a dangerous thing, as I tell the world. It's a very dangerous thing the devil is trying to. You are playing cha cha with your soul. For the formula God gave is not to replace any other man than the man who died and rose again. He is the only formula of salvation. There's no salvation in any man's name than Jesus Christ who died and resurrected. So the teachings within the end time message equating another man to Jesus Christ is 2,000% wrong. 
this is the man who said, if an angel come from heaven and tell you any other thing that we have said, curse that angel. Because God told him to say it. And that is what he said. Thou shalt be saved when you just confess it. So Satan's have entered into the end time message and is robbing people of their spiritual growth. And they must listen to me. This is my face. Listen to me. I'm trying to bring you out of hell to let you know that what you are believing is totally out of place. It is not the formula God gave to Apostle Paul to tell the Gentile bride. So we must now believe in Jesus Christ who died and resurrected and we shall be saved. We are going to just explain a short portion of scripture, Revelations chapter 10. We are skipping to the verse 5. We saw in verse 3 where the angel has put his feet on the left, uh, right foot on the sea and the left on the, on the land and has cried. And when he cried, we heard that seven thunders uttered their voices. I've told you already that those thunders are information that God is giving to the last information to prepare the elect for their taking out of the earth. We, we are looking at the verse 6 to explain a little bit because right now we know that God is going to pick seven men out of this world and speak to them and they are going to speak. Mm? Mm. And so we go back to verse 5 and we saw that the information that is supposed to take the, earth to, uh, the bride away was made known to John and John was waiting to write it but he couldn't write it and then this man as we are looking about was holding a book the book was opened before it was sealed with seven seals now the book is open because now Jesus Christ can read the names of the people who are ordained for eternal life when it was sealed you couldn't open it that's why John was crying now he is now the thing is now opened, so now everybody who is ordained Christ will be able to listen his name and say yes sir and be part and parcel of the bridegroom celebration. So we go back to verse 6 and we realize that he swore by him that seated on the sea, liveth forever and liveth here and there and there. The last statement is that the time shall be no more. So when the seven men begin to speak the voice of God and they are teaching to prepare the bride for the for the evacuation, a period will come within the teaching that there will no be permission for repentance anymore for the gentle bride is full the last person has entered in so there is no need for people to pray for repentance and cry and cry God forgive me forgive me God will not forgive you your time is gone so this period where he said the time should be no more must be explained because it is has to go through a process of time it is not the, the moment the men started speaking the seven times uttered their voices and the men started cheating that very moment time is no more it is not true because the information given by god to the men who are supposed to speak the last words is for a period of time so within that period of time, there must be concession for people to change their mind. So at what time is that time no more for gentle repentance? That's what we want to learn. The people who believe in the seven tongues being revealed or being brought up think that we are already in the millennium and then time is no more. Grace is over. So even sometimes prayers, they don't pray. Grace is over. But they have misunderstood the scriptures. 
For in Revelation chapter 10 verse 6, the moment the people begin to pray or begin to preach, the, 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 the angel begin to preach for the seven zones angels, human beings begin to preach. It refers us, as I've told you, to Matthew chapter 24 verse 31. For those men are going to become the trumpeters. I've told you already. Mm. And if you are a trumpeter, they will give you the information before you blow the trumpet as to what the trumpet will sound like. So those men will have all information and during the process where they are playing the trumpeting, they are trumpeting around, God is going to make sure that there's a period of time where man's heart to return to him who sees. It is a period that they are going to go through. For the information is not going to come one and that, that is all. For they are trumpeters and they are playing for seven zones. For the elect of the seven zones to have the same information before the evacuation. And while we are asleep, other people are waking up. So the angel who is at the people who are waking up is now going to start his work. And we who are asleep will now would have heard the information. But before anything happens, we all have the same information. So the trumpeting period is a period that is set by God alone to make sure that time has come for the Gentiles that nobody else can pray and repent and I God our accept because time is no more. I have allotted the time and the time is over. We will explain it. Matthew 24, 31, the trumpeters are going to blow on Matthew 13, 24 and 25. The blowing of the trumpet is to give the true wit the chance to prepare himself. Remember, Matthew 13, verse 24, a sower went to sow and he sowed a good seed. And then when men were asleep, the enemy went to sow bad seed. So the good wheat or the good seed is supposed to go to heaven. So the trumpeter or the seven thunder hearers and the propelling of the seven thunder words is purposely for the good wheat. So if in the church, in the country, we have a true wheat sitting down and a tear sitting down. The information coming from the seven thunder person will not be understood by the tear. For it is the wheat that God is searching for to go to heaven and not the tear. So at a certain point in time, Christianity is not group. It's person one on one me and my God you and your God because the good wit is different from the tear and the tear according to scripture the angels of the harvests the trumpeters will promote the gathering of the wheat and then other ministers anointed by God will promote the gathering of the tear in bundles and put them down. When they have to go through a process of burning. It's a process of burning. So they will be put in bundles in many countries, millions and millions and millions and millions. Oh, praise God, I've given my life to Christ. I'm not so forth. And, so and still they live their life in a wanton, wantonness area. So God is going to put them aside, and the genuine true wheat will be gathered also separately. So make up your mind and know that even though the seven thunders will utter their voices that will call men to blow the trumpet, the trumpet will be heard only by the wheat. 
praise the Lord. So if you were a tear, you follow something else. Because the which will hear it because it is they who are supposed to go to heaven and not the tear. So within the church itself, there's going to be a total separation by God himself. We listen to Jesus, we will close. Verse 30 of the same Matthew 13. You see Jesus made a point when they have bundled the test to burn there are two processes the gathering of the wheat and then the entering into the barn by the wheat so thou shalt gather the wheat and into the barn the into the barn is the heaven so those of you who have the mindset of agriculture, when there is a barn on your farm and you go to the farm and you bring corn, you pour it on the barn, you pour it on, and somebody will go and put them in the barn until the barn is full. So the gathering from the farm and the putting in in the farm are two processes. Putting in the barn are two processes. So when the trumpet is being sounded and people are being gathered together, the wheat is being gathered together, they are gathering together to enter into the barn. Now, if you watch the agriculture system carefully, the man inside the barn who is putting the corn to fill the barn, to fill the barn, to fill the man, it is only him who knows the last corn stock that when he put into the barn is full nobody will know he alone because he is in the barn you go and gather you bring it down you go and gather mm. so when i see the last corn that i put here and then the barn is finished i will close the barn and that one is god himself nobody else knows when the time is over but the moment the barn is closed, the time is over. And the one who will close the barn is God himself. So nobody in the seven talents can tell me the time is over. How did you know? It's a wrong doctrine, sister. It's a very bad doctrine. How did you know? Who was the last person who entered the barn? For Christ Jesus is saying that the wheat will be gathered and they will be entered into the barn. And I'm giving you an explanation. The gathering stage is different from the barn stage. Every agriculture person will know it, this one. Amen. Every agriculture person will tell you. You rip the yam, you bring the yam to the house, you bring the yam to the house, and you put the yam into your storehouse. If your storehouse is full, the rest of the yam, you must go and sell it. So the owner of the barn, who is filling the maize into the barn, is the only one who knows when the barn is full. It's as simple as that. For he himself said, the reapers shall bring, the test will move, and then the wheat will come, and then the good wheat will be put into the barn. But the barn must be full. How will I be in the field and know that the barn is full? Unless the owner of the barn said, oh, don't bring corn again, or don't bring corn again because this barn is full, go to another one. It's only the one who is there who will tell me. So you have to realize that people are using their mind to put people into problems. God is the one who set the boundary. Time is no more. Nobody will know it. So we shall continue to preach and preach and preach and preach until, until God himself will set the heart of man and fairness against him that they will not even pray and do anything at all. Because he is the one who set the time. It is not known by any man who the last seed is. Amen. It is not known by any man. I said, God, nobody knows. And then when the last barn is entered in, then the barn is closed. So the closing of the barn means that time shall be no more. And the doing of the time shall be no more is known by God and God alone. How many mansions are in heaven? Do you know? And every mansion is to be occupied by God's children. 
So if we don't know how many mansions, how do you know whether the last one has been given, the key has been given away? You are joking. Time is no more. Time is no more. Time is no more. There's no more grace. There's no more grace. We can, and then they believe it so much that it has become a fabric of their lives. And it's demonic. You even don't know how many mansions there are there in heaven. And you don't know how many people God is going to pick on earth to go to that mansion to enter into the man. So instead of you to rely on God, scripture, and let God do his work, you are now talking to God about what he's supposed to do and giving him quantities. I would never tell you, Paul, how many of his children. It's a wrong thing. When we see these, your brethren, tender, 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 tell them that they are sick. Pastor Farris said, Muyare, soon soon muyare, seriously. Muyare pa. Come back to the word of God. You will get healed. And then tell them again, I said they have demon inside them. Remove them from kingdom of heaven to kingdom of, kingdom of death. How do you do that? Christ Jesus, I'm closing, alone is the owner of the bride. He knows the quantity. He knows where the last person will come from. And he knows when they will enter. And when they will enter and the band is closed, then time shall be no more. I'm closing one more time. Brothers and sisters, even John, who saw the rapture sinned, couldn't give us the number. It's a multitude of people. They are a sea of glass before the throne of God. Time is over. He who was lifted to see the saints raptured in millions, he couldn't give us a number. He said there was a multitude of people as a sea of glass in front of the throne. Revelation 4, 6, Revelation 15, 2. So if, if God didn't even give John the door so that we will know that maybe we have one million people in the world going to go to heaven and then, and then you will sit down and say the, the band is closed and then it is over. You are forgotten to pray. Do you know what they are doing now? <laughs> when the grace is over, you have been married for 30 years, 20 years. Now you must go and search for 18 year old girl. So the pastors are leaving their wives and mar- marrying 18 year old girls in the church. Ah. You want to bring it to my church? Ah. Pastor. And then your wife is. Your, your, your last born is older than your second wife. And you say grace is over. And so you make Jim. You leave your wife and go and marry a young girl in America, Canada, and the rest. And they are using money to buy people in Africa to propagate their knowledge. Let them come here. They will see how chase them out. They don't know scripture. Shall we bow our heads? Father, we give you praise. As we get knowledge of these things, help us to live a righteous life. That when the time comes, and time shall be no more, we shall be able to find our place in a better place. We thank you.